the time has finally come for me to make a Victorian walking suit, which I have been dying to do for ages. Well, most of a Victorian walking suit. I'm not going to do like a jacket, but I want the waistcoat and the skirt. Those are, I don't, I don't know why, but like just the idea of a waistcoat and a skirt makes me extremely happy. So we're going to do it finally. And I've been planning to do this for a while, but I recently got like a little push in the right direction because my friend got us a discount code for the War of the Worlds immersive experience in London, which War of the Worlds is set at like the end of the 19th century. So this is perfect. And she wants us to, to all go dressed up in costume in like 1890s garb or whatever. So it's a perfect time for me to make this waistcoat and skirt, except I only have two weeks left. So today is Friday, two weeks from now on Thursday. So I have less than two weeks. We're gonna go see War of the Worlds. So <laughs> I haven't given myself a whole lot of time to do this, but in my defense, things kept getting in the way. Like I literally just got off a plane yesterday and I, I immediately like cut out the pattern, which I've had this pattern for ages. I bought it ages ago, but I finally like stuck it all together and cut it out yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna do the mock-up, I think, of the waistcoat and then hopefully tomorrow I can actually get started on the waistcoat. I have this fabric, which I'm so excited about because I have a story for this fabric. I found it at like a dead stock fabric store and I was browsing for something completely different and I just happened to stumble across this like plaid wool and I asked them about it and they said it was six pounds a meter and I was like, oh, okay, um, what kind of fabric is it? And they were like 100% wool and I was like, for six pounds a meter, you've gotta be kidding me, right? Like. That is ridiculously cheap. And they said it was dead stock. So I bought the whole thing. It was like six and a quarter meters, I think they had left. So this is it, this is all of it, which should be just about enough for everything because I am short. So I'm hoping I'll need less fabric than the pattern asks for. So I'm really hoping I can squeeze it into six, six and a quarter meters. Um, it will be a little bit tight, but we're gonna see what we can do, especially with the pattern matching and everything. I was a little bit worried about the color because I was worried it would be kind of, you know, brown on brown on brown, but it's actually really pretty and it's got like this gray, it's it's kind of more bluish in real life, but it looks kind of gray on camera. I think it's just perfect for a walking suit. So I'm very excited to use this, but first it's mock-up time. So one thing I forgot to mention is that the pattern I'm using is Black Snail 0220, I think. It's the 1890s uh, Victorian ladies vests. So I've already stuck the pattern together, like I said, but I can already tell that this is gonna be very long in the waist. So that's gonna be an issue, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just make the mock-up as is and I'll fit it with the actual mock-up because I found that if I just alter the pattern right away, I almost never get it right because I don't actually know what I'm doing. Things always translate a little bit differently on fabric anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll just do it as is. I know it's gonna be too big and we'll, we'll take it from there. So here is the mock-up. I'm actually surprised that it's not too long. I thought it was gonna be too long because I have a short torso and everything is always too long on me. But yeah, actually, I think, it, I think it is just about the right length. I put on my corset, by the way, so this is how it's gonna be in the final when I'm wearing it like over a skirt and my corset and everything. I don't know what to do about this front bit because actually the back is fine, I think. The back, I'm pretty sure, is good. It's about right and the side seam is hitting in the right place, obviously. It's just this front bit and I'm not used to things being too small on me. Normally my problem is that things are too big and so I have to like take it in. I don't know how to take things out. So <laughs> this is new for me. But what I'm wondering is if I move this dart because this dart I feel like is supposed to go this way. This should hit here sort of so that this is in the middle because right now this is obviously not in the middle of my body. But this should be in the center there, which I literally, I cannot pull this closed any tighter and I don't want to. I don't, you know, want to be squeezed in too tight. I'm not going to tight lace my corset or anything. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try and move the dart and we'll see how that goes. But I'm, I'm really excited about this. I mean, I think it's going to look wonderful when it's in, you know, not this fabric. I'm just going to take out this dart, put it back on and then see where I need to pinch it and, and pull it in to make it the right shape. So I think that's the game plan. I don't know, I'm not used to it. This is all very new to me. So um, let's see what happens. Okay, so this is it without the darts at all. And I mean, it is better. 
like now that kind of matches up but it definitely needs darts because this is not supposed to happen so this point is supposed to be in the center and then I sort of just pinch this I don't know I've never done this sort of thing before I'm better at skirts <laughs> I don't understand bodices and waistcoats and I've never done darts before even. See what I worry about is that I'm gonna ruin the front of it because obviously the darts are where they are for a reason so maybe I just need to make them smaller like if I do the dart in the same okay I'm gonna take it off and try this again hold on okay so I've just pinned the darts back in in the same place but I took them in like half a centimeter or something and I think this will work What's throwing me off, I think, is the seam allowance and the facing and everything. But now that I've done this and I've folded in the seam allowance on this one, that looks like it's about right. That looks like it would be about center. And I was looking at the example vest um, on the pattern, like on the front of the pattern, and this does not actually match up with the this like princess seam, or the dart rather. Um, it doesn't actually match up. There is a gap. So that would be okay. If I think this makes sense to me. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going... To cut out the pattern as it is I'll sew the darts in the way I've done it now where it's more let out than the pattern calls for so by that half a centimeter I will have the extra fabric in the darts if I need to pull it in more but other than that I think this should be fine theoretically one would hope I'm just a bit nervous because I obviously I can't do over with the wool if I screw it up I screw it up I don't believe any sewing project is ever like fully screwed up. I think there's always something you can do to fix it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't scare me. I guess I'm just gonna cut out the pattern pieces. I might start sewing them together today or I might wait until tomorrow. It is getting a bit late, so I might have dinner. But I think for a first mock-up, I think this is okay. I'm gonna try not to panic when I cut out the real fabric, but I think everything's gonna be fine. Everything will be fine. And I forgot to pre-wash my fabric. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, it is day two, it is 8.30 a.m. and I'm meeting a friend for lunch at two, so I'm gonna try and get some stuff done before then. So my fabric has been drying overnight and it's ready to go, so we're just gonna go and cut out the pattern pieces. Okay, so I thought I'd go over pattern matching because I know that it was a bit tricky for me to figure out at first. The way I do it is first I'm gonna line up the grain line. It's pretty easy to do on a plaid. I uh, have never actually tried to do it on anything else, so that's unhelpful but also with pattern matching I mean I feel like it makes the most sense for a plaid and I mean this is a bit tedious but honestly for me it's worth it because I get really annoyed like the, the dress I'm wearing now I didn't make this <laughs> but it the pattern does not match and it really bugs me so maybe it's just me it's so scary cutting into fabric for the first time I really don't want to screw this up we're just gonna do it ah! now what I do so I flip this piece over and I line up the pattern. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. It's pretty good. This should now be a mirror image. So I have cut that out and now, oh, that's a pin in the floor. Okay, and that friends is why we don't cut things out on the floor because I have pins everywhere. This was a bad idea. So then we have the back and obviously this bit here will match up to the back, right? What I'm gonna do is now line this up, one of these pieces up, as best as I can. So I've laid out the front piece, and then I line up the pattern with it. And then I should be able to just slide out that. And then we're gonna line up the grain line again. And then I will pin this down and we'll cut it out. So that's cut out, and now the moment of truth will be if I pin these together, there we go. So this would be the side seam and it matches up really perfectly. So yay, I did it. And then we do the same thing. So because the first one was a mirror image, hopefully if I just mirror this, it should line up with the second one too. Look at that perfect pattern matching. I am very pleased. So this pattern has a facing and a lining for the front. I don't think it needs a lining, mostly because I don't have a lining for it. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna forgo the lining for now. I might pin this all together and see how it goes. But for the facing, normally I don't think you would have to pattern match it because it would just be on the inside. But because this has a collar that kind of rolls out, the facing will be visible. So I'm gonna pattern match the facing for the front. 
um, the bottom facing does not need to be pattern matched because that's just gonna be completely hidden. So I'm not worried about that. But the front facing, I will just pattern match real quickly and I don't think you need to see that because it's the same as the way I did the back. So I've just gone ahead and sewn in the darts in the back. The same way I did it in the mock-up, nothing special. I did kind of mess up my pattern matching, but there is nothing I can do about that and it's not my fault. I'm literally just following the instructions in the pattern. It's very detailed, it's easy to follow. I'm gonna put right sides together. And then this is the center back seam. So I will just go ahead and sew that on the machine. All right, moment of truth. The pattern matching, oh, that's so satisfying. I, oh, I love pattern matching. So what it wants me to do now for some reason is to finish this seam. It wants me to fell it. And then it also wants me to finish the bottom edge. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because I don't know why I would be finishing seams when I haven't like done anything, but I guess I might as well. I would rather follow the instructions than do my own thing and be wrong, which is likely. So I might just finish the back right now and then we'll see, cause it's already almost 11 because I take forever to do anything. So the back is pretty much done now. It's not bad. The bottom is a little bit wonky. I think it'll be okay once I put it on. So the back is supposed to be like the lining fabric. It's supposed to be different from the like the front fabric, but I, I wanted this to all be wool. So I will have to deal with that. If this is a little bit funny looking, I'm sure it will be fine once it's actually on me. So I guess next I'll work on the front. Not entirely sure, but that might be tonight or tomorrow, so we'll see. Good morning, it is Sunday, day three. I was intending to do some work on the waistcoat yesterday, but I got home and I fell asleep for five hours. Yay, jet lag. But I was thinking about this yesterday and this wool is very nice, but it also is like shedding quite a bit. I mean, it's fine, but like I am finding bits of hair like on my desk and things. I don't really wanna be having to take a lint roller to anything that I wear under this for the foreseeable future. So I am gonna line it, I think, which I did not account for when I bought this fabric. I did get a lining for the skirt because I knew that I wanted it to kind of have a little bit more body, but I only have four meters of that because that's all I thought I need for the skirt. So I think what I'm just gonna do is use my mock-up as the lining, which this fabric is not like necessarily the best for lining. It's just cotton and it's very patterned, but I figure no one's gonna see it but me and you. That way I'm not wasting the fabric either. I can just use the mock-up because I'd also, I didn't change anything about the pattern except the darts at the front. The, the front has a different like. There's a pin in my mock, there are pins in my mock-up and I did not take them out, hold on. I'm gonna line the back first. I am just gonna flat line everything because I think that makes sense. The only problem is that I finished all the seams on the back yesterday, which I didn't need to do if I was gonna do a lining, but that's fine. It wasn't that hard. Let's start with that. I'll line the back first and then I'll cut out the lining for the front and then we'll work on the front. Okay, so I've taken the back that mock-up. So all of this, I'll just baste into place because these are all still raw edges, so that's fine. It's just this bottom that I finished the seam. So what I'm going to do, I'll just fold this over and have this match up with the seam and then I can, I don't know, is it called a catch stitch or a herringbone stitch or something? I'll, I'll put that into place so that this matches up and it's still a nice flat, neat seam. I've just gone ahead and basted this all together and I did the bottom. I've never actually done this stitch before and I don't know if I did it right, but I kind of like it. So next it wants me to flat line the front and then we'll start putting the front together. Right, so I've just added the lining, basted that into place. This bit is gonna be covered by facing all of this. Next it wants me to stitch the collar together. So I'll just do that real quick. Right, I've already run into a problem and I'm not sure what's going on here, but do you see this little like triangle? I don't know what that is because the facing should theoretically cover the lining. And this bottom facing, I was worried for a second because I was like, okay, this literally matches up exactly. So how the heck am I supposed to sew this seam? But I think it'll be fine because this bit will be seam allowance. So that'll be a different thing altogether. So that's fine. That's not what I'm worried about. What the heck is this? What, hello? I, I don't understand because I cut out these pieces exactly as I was supposed to, including the lining, which I realized I did last minute, but I did do it. And maybe it's because it's supposed to be like interfaced with the canvas. I don't know. I don't know what this is and I don't know how to fix it other than cutting new pieces. So the, the big pattern piece, I'm gonna cut that out of the lining. 
and I will re-flatline everything and I'll get back to you. I, why does this happen every time I sew? Why am I like incapable of doing things correctly? I don't know. Maybe I should follow the freaking pattern next time. Sorry. That was a whole rant. It's going to be okay. I'm just going to reline the thing. At least I only basted it in place. Everything will be fine. Calm down, Rishali. Okay, now that that's all sorted out, <laughs> now we can start on the facing. Yay. So this is the front facing, this is the bottom facing, and we just sew them together so that they do that, essentially. <laughs> well, this is rather odd, isn't it? I don't know if I was meant to cut out one of these with more seam allowance. I don't think so. I think it all was supposed to come with seam allowance, but this really doesn't match up and I this concerns me slightly. I'm gonna try and match it up with the front beam one second. Okay, see, this is what I don't understand. In what way is this how a facing works? Am, am I stupid? Have I done something wrong? Because I, I don't think this is how it was supposed to work. Maybe I was supposed to cut this one without with um more seam allowance. I mean, I cut this out of scraps. I've still got plenty of the wool left, so I might just redo it because I genuinely do not know how this is supposed to work otherwise. What I would assume is supposed to happen is that the facing is supposed to sit like this. But if you look at that, that is literally where the seam matches up. And so I don't know if this, I think this has to have like an extra, like if I just extend this a bit. I might just cut out new pieces because I genuinely do not know how this was supposed to work otherwise. I am terribly confused. Well, I think I figured out the problem. I haven't done the freaking darts yet, which in my defense, I could not find in the instructions any point at which you were supposed to do the darts, but obviously you're supposed to do the darts after you flatline. And obviously it was my mistake because it always is my mistake and I just don't know what I've done wrong until I've done it. So I'm going to go ahead and do these darts in the front. Like I said with the mock-up, I'm going to take them in about half a centimeter. So let's do that. Well, now that the dart is in, this original facing piece matches perfectly because of course it does because the dart needed to be in. Ugh, why am I like this? Okay, we're back on track. One thing I am slightly disappointed about is that the dart sort of messed up my pattern matching. So that's a bit unfortunate because this is literally the front. I'll see what I can do on the other side. I don't really know how you're supposed to fix that with a dart, but if I manage to, I honestly might redo this one because I just, I, I cannot with it being this off. It really bugs me. Okay, well now that I'm looking at this, uh, so I, I marked it on the right side of the fabric instead of the wrong side this time, so I don't have to thread mark it. But now that I'm looking at this, there definitely is a way to just match up this dart so that it, you know, pattern matches. And so I think I'm going to redo the other side because I just, I cannot stand that it didn't pattern match. This is taking me twice as long as it really should. Okay, I've come to the conclusion that the way I'm doing this with the ladder stitch, it's too hard to make the pattern match. So I'm going to undo this and try a different method of sewing the darts. So now if I fold this over and I match up the bottom. Okay, yeah, that is much, much better. So the dart is just a teensy tiny bit off from where it should be. You can see that this is where the point is supposed to be. And it's just, that's where the point is going to be. So it's just ever so slightly off. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference in the final thing. And I would prefer to do it this way so that I can have my nice pattern matching. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to sew this down. I mean, I guess I could just do it by machine, couldn't I? It scares me a little bit because I've never done a dart with a machine before. But I think it should be fine. So let's machine sew it and see how it goes. The dart is done for the second time. I am very happy with the pattern matching at least. So... Whatever happens, I'm at least glad I have that. Now I've got to redo the other one. This is a mess. So I'm going to redo the other one and then I'll have lunch and then we'll finally get started on the facings, which I've been trying to do for like two hours before I got distracted by this stupid dart. Uh, the darts are in, which this one is still ever so slightly off and it's really bugging me, but I, I cannot, I cannot redo it a third time. I absolutely cannot. And Really, you, you won't be able to tell from afar. It looks better than it did. It's just it's so annoying that it's like literally that far off. And you can really tell with this stripe here, which, oh! Anyway, it's fine. This one looks beautiful. Before I go any further, I um, I just pinned, oops, sorry. I just pinned together the um, side seams real quick so I could do a quick fitting. 
and I think it looks really good. I'm very excited. I think taking out the darts just as much as I did was a good idea because now I think this will fit perfectly once the, the seam allowance is in and everything. Actually, it it's almost a little bit loose, but I'd rather it be a little bit loose than too big or than, um, than too small. But honestly, I think when this is all buttoned up, because I don't actually know how much space is supposed to be there, but when I finish the side seams and I go to put on the buttons, I'll put it on and I'll see where exactly the buttons need to go to make all this line up. It feels great otherwise. I am super pleased with it. I Obviously these side seams don't look great right now because they're just pinned, but I'm sure they'll look fine when they're done. Um, yeah, I'm super happy. Let's keep going, I guess. Facings are done and sewn. Yay. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pin this to the actual front and then we'll go from there. So this is all pinned right sides together. And now I'm pretty sure I just sew like literally all the way around all of this. So wish me luck, here I go. Okay, whew, done. That was a lot of sewing, but the facing is on. And then the next step would be to turn it this way, the right way. And then I think to fell this down to the lining which obviously is gonna be hand sewing. I have been working on this since I think like 10 a.m. It is now almost five. So I've been working on this for like seven hours with a lunch break in between. And I think I'm going a little crazy. So I might leave it for today. The original plan was to have everything, like to have the waistcoat done today. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think though that I can finish it tomorrow because there's not a whole lot left to do. It's literally just finish the facing and then I think, let me check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure then I just sew it to the back and then it's just gonna be like finishing. So felling the seam allowances and everything. So I think I can finish it tomorrow. It's kind of, it's gonna be still a lot of work and it's gonna take probably another seven hours, but I think I did okay today. I probably could have done it faster if I hadn't kept unpicking my seams. It's fine, everything's fine, I'm fine. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello there, it is day four. And if my hair looks different, it's because I dyed it red last night. And it definitely was not because I was having a mental breakdown over this waistcoat. Anyway, so I have just fell down the facings on the front, which ignore all the pins. It's because I haven't pressed my seams yet because a friend borrowed my iron. So I haven't been able to press the seams and I'm scared of them like rolling inward. I have fell down all of these seams. I didn't film it because it was boring and I get bored watching people fell down seams. No offense to anybody who enjoys that. So next I'm supposed to attach it to the back, but apparently I was supposed to finish the arm size of the back first, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because why, why wouldn't I just do the arm size together and like, but I figure there's a reason that the pattern has done it that way and I trust the pattern and I trust the instructions and I don't trust myself. So I'll go ahead and finish the arm size real quick and then we'll get started attaching the front to the back. I'm probably not going to film the arm size bit because that's also boring. Sorry, I just felt like I should clarify. I'm not having a mental breakdown over this waistcoat. I had actually planned to dye my hair red for a very long time. So please don't worry. <laughs> Okay, well now I might actually be having a mental breakdown over this waistcoat because I've been trying to figure out how to put the front and the back together for like 20 minutes. I cannot figure it out. And I've read these instructions like a billion times. I've read their blog a billion times and I, I don't know what they're asking me to do. I'm just terribly confused because first of all, they say fold the facing to one side, but I just stitched down the facing. What is happening? I don't, I'm so confused. <laughs> anyway. I mean, I just, I genuinely don't know how to put this together. Let me show you what's happening because I'm not stupid. I mean, I am a little bit, but not this stupid. Okay, so this is the back, right? This is the front. So the front goes like this. At least the side seams match. So that's, you know, a start. But then we get to the shoulders and this is what it wants me to do. It wants me to do the shoulders first. And I simply cannot figure out how these pieces go together because what is this? Like. Why is this one shaped like that? And then this one is shaped like that. And how does it fit together? Am, am I stupid? Again, I might be. I'm fairly sure that this pattern knows what it's doing and I just don't know what I'm doing. It's just really bugging me that I cannot figure this out. I mean, if it were up to me, now that I've finished one, well, I've finished the back arm side, right? If it were up to me, I would do the front arm side now. Like right now the seam doesn't match up because this is seam allowance and that's finished. I would finish that arm's eye and then just have this meet up like that. I'm gonna pin it together and see what I'm doing wrong because maybe if I put it on, I'll understand how the pieces work together.
Okay, well, I backstitched the shoulder seams, and then I tried to line it up again, and once again, it did not line up. And I'm just bamboozled by this waistcoat and its weird back seam. I don't understand the freaking collar seam. I backstitched the whole shoulder seam, and then I actually unpicked one of them because I was like, I must have done this wrong. There's a reason it's not lining up. And I tried to do it again, and it's just not working. And so I think I'm just gonna listen to what my brain is telling me and my brain is telling me that I'm burnt out and I need a break. And so I'm gonna call it for today. I got some work done, I'm not mad at it. Well, I am mad at it. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna like sleep on it and figure it out tomorrow. So I will see you soon. Okay, it is day five. I gave my waistcoat a little time out because it was misbehaving, but I think it's ready to behave now. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just gonna do it as best as I can, and if the seams don't entirely match up, I'm just gonna live with it. What was throwing me off is that when I line up the back seam, so the back of the collar with the center back, then the rest doesn't seem to line up. There's this little bit here that just doesn't line up. And so what I think I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna fold it out of the way. I'm gonna sew this down as best as I can. And there might be like a tiny little pucker at the back, right where the back meets the collar. I am beyond caring at this point. I am usually a perfectionist, but when it comes to sewing, it's like if I can wear the garment and it looks okay, I'm just gonna be okay with it. Having something that's like almost finished and looks pretty decent, I'm just gonna take it as a win. I'll just sew the back seam as best as I can and we'll go from there. <laughs> Let's do this. This is the weird thing that I'm finding is that what is this and why why does it exist? I'm certain I've done something wrong in putting this together, but I, I, I cannot be bothered to try and fix it because I just don't know how to. I'm just gonna fold this bit out of the way and sew from here to there and fold this bit out of the way because I've already sewn here. I did pin it all together with the side seams and everything and tried it on and this will work. Um, you really can't tell because the, the collar is gonna fold over this part of the back anyway so if there is a, a tiny bit of a pucker here it really won't matter too much I'm just gonna sew this by hand and then i think all that's left is the side seams and the buttons and buttonholes so i might actually finish this today which is very exciting okay let me show you what's happening so first of all how cool does this look yay so i've sewn the back the problem is that i've got all these raw seams right there which I don't know what I'm supposed to do with those, but they don't show on the outside. So, I don't know, bias tape? The inside of this is not gonna look pretty. I mean, the lining is already a lot, which actually now that I'm looking at it, maybe I'll put a pocket in that. <laughs> hey kids, you wanna buy some sundials? <laughs> Sorry. I also haven't done the side seams yet. This is just pin, so I'll do the side seams. I don't know how to finish these seams. I might just cover them with bias tape and call it a day. So buttons will go up this way and that way. I'm just gonna, cover the buttons with leftover scraps of, of the wool. And then buttonholes I'll have to do by hand because I don't have a buttonhole stitch on my machine. We're getting there, we're almost done. Let's do the side seams. It's too thick. <laughs> I've taken the pattern and I've marked where all of the button holes and button markings are. This cross is right over left, so these will be button holes and these will be fake buttons. And then on the left side, these will be real buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the buttons and I will show you how to do that. So I've got my button here and I've cut out a circle about twice as big in diameter as the button. We will run a gathering stitch all the way around this. That's done. Now I'll put the button in and then pull on that to tighten it. So I basically, I just go through the center several times to kind of really pull this taut. So now I've got this long tail of thread, which by the way, I've doubled this thread um, and knotted it at the end when I started the gathering stitch. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of push that into the middle here so that it's coming straight out of the center of this button and then I will cut it at this end. So now I've got this covered button with this nice long tail, which will help us attach it to the vest. So I'm gonna do eight more of these and I will come back to you. So I did half of them off camera just because I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. And um, remember what I said about leaving like a little tail at the end when you cover your button? because that'll help to attach it later. Yeah, that doesn't work. Um, it, it absolutely does not work unless you leave like a really, really long 
um, tail. Maybe use twice as much thread as I used. I, I don't know. Basically, the reason it didn't work with this short amount of string is that I had originally thought, okay, I'll thread that through the needle and then just push it through, you know, the center of one of these marks that I've made and then tie it off at the back and that'll be good. The buttons were way too loose and it scared me a bit. So let me show you what I ended up doing. So I ended up cutting off that tail I left because it was pretty much useless. So I've got a nice long bit of thread here now that I've attached to the button. Here is the center of my mark. I'll put that through. You can see when I've just done that, like how loose this is. And I'm holding this thread pretty taut, but it's still very loose. I come back kind of through the same area, except I come back like through the actual fabric of the button and then go back through the fabric of the button down the center into the back. I did that at all four points. So I've just done it through the top now and I'll go around and do it left, bottom, right, and then I'll tie it off at the back. And basically that just secures it. Obviously there still needs to be enough room for the buttonhole to go around it. But because these are kind of bulky at the back, it there is enough room for the buttonhole. So I'm not so worried about that. So I've done that at all four places and now this is a lot more steady. So I'm not worried about that coming off at all. And then I could just cut this and knot it off or I could, um, do it this way, which I prefer because it's a little bit more stable, I think. So now my button on the other side, I think is pretty secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other four. It's getting a little bit late. I need to eat dinner. So I think we're gonna finish this tomorrow with the buttonholes, but then that's pretty much it is buttonholes and then finishing the seam. I'm not gonna finish the seams in this video. I'm probably just gonna cover them with bias tape. I'm guessing if you're watching this channel, all three of you, that you, you know how to cover things with bias tape. I'm gonna do the rest of these buttons and I will see you tomorrow for the buttonholes. Okay, it is day seven. Are we ready for the reveal? Because I woke up this morning and I just immediately did all the buttonholes. Like I brushed my teeth and I had my breakfast and I did the buttonholes. So here we go. Ta -da! I'm so happy with it. I think it looks so cool. I don't know what I expected, but I did not expect it to look this good. And I'm so glad that I put on this like skirt and my shirt and everything and my corset, my corset's under this. So it all fits really well, except the back, which we've been knew that the back was not going to fit because I still don't know how I was meant to do that back seam. I don't care. It's like a little bit of gappage. I can pin it if I really need to. I think it looks amazing and I'm not just like tooting my own horn. Like obviously a lot of this is the pattern itself. Considering that this was a bit of a complicated project, I think I did okay on it. I wonder if I turn back the collar more if that would help. Okay. Yeah, that did help a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see. I'm really pleased with these buttons and buttonholes as well. I think they look really cool. Obviously the uh, the thread that I used for the buttonholes is just slightly a different brown than the rest of it. But um, if someone is close enough to look at my buttonholes, then they're too close. I could wear this over the gray skirt for the event that I'm going to, um, but I would like to make the matching skirt or I think that would be super fun. So I'm gonna work on that next. I especially, I love how my corset feels under this because I, when I was trying this on, I was like, oh, okay, I mean, it looks good. It doesn't have quite that like dramatic shape that I want, but with the corset, it's it's just exactly the silhouette that I wanted. I've been in love with the 1890s silhouette for a very long time now, and to see it on myself is just very exciting. And I love that I can do that with the corset and the, the right waistcoat and everything. It's just, oh, I feel so cool. <laughs> I don't know why I feel so cool. Like this is the dorkiest thing. It's literally noon and I'm playing dress up in my flat by myself, but it makes me so happy. I, I love this waistcoat so, so much. I just, I can't believe I made this. Do you ever feel kind of like a god when you're sewing? Because like I made this out of flat fabric. Like what? Obviously the seams need some pressing. I will be doing that, but Otherwise, I think this project is just about done and I will see you next time for the matching skirt. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you had fun on this very long, very complicated project with many mistakes, but I had fun. So that's the important thing and I think it turned out great. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Do I look like a portrait? <laughs> I'm trying very hard to look like a Victorian portrait at the moment. I don't think I do. <laughs>